Namaste, yogis. My name is Matt, and welcome to my channel. This is my wife, Jody, and our little doggy, Kashi, and Luna here at the back joining us for this practice today. So I hope you guys are having some nice holidays right now. In today's practice, we're going to need a bolster and two blocks, and we're going to be working on various yin postures. So we should be doing this class for about 45 minutes. And let's first dive into it. So what you want to do is you can set up a ramp like Jody did. With the bolster, you place a block on its lowest setting and one higher up. With mine, I went a little lower. And in this position, some people do it without the bolster at all. Because they're really flexible, but that's not my case. Not yet, at least. So just going onto your knees, bringing your butt to the bottom of the bolster. You're just gonna start to lower yourself down using your hands to brace yourself. And then you're just gonna make contact with the bolster very slowly and allow the front of your thighs to open up. So if you're really flexible, you don't need the bolster or the block, but if you aren't, just go with your limitations and find what works best for you. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and start breathing deeply in through the nose and out through the nose. We're going to be cultivating the appreciation of life today. Just being alive is a gift in itself. And we sometimes forget about it. In close to two months, me and Jody are going to have our baby girl and this is really we're really excited about this bringing a new life to this earth and doing our best to guide her through all the challenges and obstacles that she may encounter So you're going to find that the longer you stay in this position, the more comfortable it becomes. So just keep breathing in and out and allow your body to settle comfortably into this. And then bracing your abs, you can slowly come back up, very slowly, taking your time to get out of this position. And now we're going to place the bolster and the blocks aside, and we're going to make our way into wild knee, wide knee, sorry, child's pose. So bring your knees to the outside edge of your mat. You're just gonna sit on your heels. And we're just gonna start walking our hands very slowly forward. Allowing our head and torso to come down and making contact with the floor. So 
So this is one asana that I really like to calm my mind and allow me to connect deeply in words. We're going to be staying in this position, but we're going to start walking our hands toward the left side of our mat and then making our way down, just opening up our right side. So this is a variation of the wide knee child's pose. And we're now going to slowly walk our hands towards the right outside area of our mat, opening up our left side this time. So this feels really good. And you will notice that we don't work enough on our sides and that's something that I've been starting to incorporate more of in our yin practices.
we're going to walk our hands back to the middle. Bring our knees inward and come back to all fours. So from here, we're going to take 10 breaths and we're going to do cat and cow. So inhaling, pushing our belly button down, curving our spine, looking up. Exhaling, bringing that belly button in, rounding our spine, pushing through our hands and shoulders. And then coming back, inhale. And exhale. So I'm gonna let you complete 10 breaths like this on your own time. Just take it slow. Try to feel all your vertebrae moving slowly. Feeling all the beautiful energy that's circulating from opening up your spine. And once you're done, I'm gonna invite you to grab your blocks and bring them to the front of your mat. We're gonna go into dragon pose. So bringing your left foot beside your left wrist, extending your right leg back and behind, keeping a 90 degree angle into that left knee. So we're gonna use the blocks for support, looking up, keeping our spine curved. You can even, if you're not really flexible, use the blocks under highest settings, medium settings, or no settings at all. So that's gonna be totally up to you guys to decide where you wanna stay in this position today. In my case, I want a bit more of a deep hip opener, so I'm gonna try to make my way down slowly.
gonna slowly come up and we're gonna push through our hands extend that left leg and just go into a hamstring stretch so just holding it here for a little bit this is a counter stretch to what we just did and it feels really good in yin yoga we try to always follow up one asana with another one that's gonna counteract what we just did And if you can sit all the way down to your heel, feel free to do so. I'm going to be holding this for another 20 seconds before we go on to our right leg. I invite you to go back up. We're gonna bring that left leg back. And now we're gonna bring our right foot beside our right wrist, extending our left leg back and flat onto the ground. Once again, I'm gonna be working from the floor today, but feel free to use the blocks like Jody's doing. slowly start to push back extending our right leg going into this hamstring stretch and then feel free to come down onto your heel just holding this and enjoying the feel-good sensation that it provides.
and we're slowly coming back up. Now going back onto our knees, we're gonna go into one asana I really like. It's the sleeping swan. So you bring your left knee behind your left wrist and then you bring your shin either 90 degree angle to the front, 45 degree angle towards the back, or it can be all the way in. This is just based on your own flexibility level. And then from here, if you want, you can grab a block and place it right underneath your left glute for support. And I'm gonna invite you to lower yourselves onto your forearm. You can bring your forehead right on the back of your hands. And just allow your body to open up. If you aren't really flexible, don't worry about your left shin making its way backwards. Your body will try to settle into something that works on its own. So just let it be. It'll get better with time. our way back up now extending that left leg back bring our right knee behind our right wrist you can hold that right ankle with your left hand to help you place your shin towards the front of your mat and then I'm gonna invite you to place a block for support behind your right glute and then make your way down to your forearms.
And I'm gonna slow invite you to make your way back up. And from here, we're gonna slowly make our way to our bellies. And we're gonna go into Sphinx bows. And for Jody, she's gonna go into Sill pose when she's gonna push up with her arms to create a bit more space for our baby girl. So either or is good, you guys. Just pick what you wanna work on today. From here, I'm going to offer you two variations for shoulder stretches. So the one that Jody's going to do, she's going to go on all fours like this. And she's going to take our right arm and scoop it through and lower ourselves down onto that right shoulder and on her head. And then for those of you who were in Sphinx pose with me, we're just gonna do the same. We're gonna take our right hand, scoop it underneath that opening behind our left elbow. And then we're just gonna lower ourselves down onto our chest and shoulder, getting that nice shoulder stretch. So both positions work very well. Obviously I have to modify a few of our asanas for Jody, but they're both very good. So just pick the one you want.
gonna make our way out of this one going back onto my elbows I'm gonna take my left arm scoop it through and lower myself down on that shoulder Jody's gonna do the same with the position she's doing right now So I like to use my other arm, which is the right one in this case. I put it down in front of that left arm and I just lower my ear to it and my forehead just for support. It's more comfortable. come out of it so pushing yourself back up I'm gonna invite you to make your way onto your backs for a banana pose which is gonna be our final asana today before Savasana so Jody is gonna be working on her sides by going onto her right hip and then pushing up with her arm to stretch that side but we're gonna make our way down onto banana pose I'm gonna grab this so from your back you're gonna start walking your legs towards the left side of your mat we're gonna take your right leg and you're gonna cross it over that left ankle moving your upper torso towards the left and then you can grab onto your elbows above your head. Just allowing the right side of your body to open up. My dogs really want to be part of the yoga video today.
and we're going to slowly uncross our right leg, moving our legs slowly towards the right side of our mat. And then we're going to cross our left ankle over the right one, moving our upper torso towards the right side of the mat. And then we're going to grab onto our forearms, our elbows above our head, and allow the left side of our body to open up. And for a variation, you can just look at Jody and follow what she's doing if that suits your needs best today. And we're going to slowly uncross our legs. And I'm going to invite you to make your way back into the middle of your mat for Savashna. If you are pregnant, I'm going to invite you to follow Jody and go on your sides. So it's basically like sleeping sideways. You're going to go on your left shoulder. You're going to place a bolster in between your legs. And you can place a block underneath your head for support. Just to keep everything in line. So again, I want you guys to cherish the gift of life. Just being grateful and happy to be alive and being able to share this experience with us today. So thanks for joining us on To The Mat. If you like the classes, please subscribe to my channel, share with your friends or you can make a donation to support the channel. So I'm gonna wish you a beautiful day, guys. So just close your eyes and you can relax and stay in this position for as long as you want. I'm gonna see you next time. Ciao.